Pushdown Automata, also known as a stack-based finite state machine, is a technique that I first read about in this book here. The big pro to using a stack-based FSM is that it acts a little bit like a history, so your characters or your systems in your game can react to something that happens in the world and then go right back into what they were doing before. And in fact, they can do that many levels deep, and that's what we're going to build today. And instead of doing a character AI, which this is also great for, we're going to build a pushdown automata that you could use for a crafting system. As always, the best way to learn is to do. So let's get started. Well, let's take a look at a diagram really quick before we start coding anything. Pushdown Automata is implemented with a stack, and it's going to involve a whole bunch of states being pushed onto the stack. Since we're building a crafting prototype today, we'll have five different states here. Idle, collect items, refining, crafting complete, and then counter effect, which is when a problem happens. The crafting workstation will start in an idle state, but if the player starts interacting with it, we'll push another state onto the stack, which is where the player will provide their materials. If they stop interacting with the workstation, we pop that state off of the stack. Now suppose they do meet all the conditions to start crafting, then we go into another state, which is the refining state. So while this refining or crafting is going on, we might push on some negative effects that the player has to deal with and counter. We'll push those on the stack. As the player deals with them or doesn't deal with them, we pop them off and handle the consequences. If we make it all the way to the end of the crafting, we're going to push one more state on there, which is the crafting complete. This will give the player their reward and consume any materials or deal with anything else we have to do. And then we start exiting these states one by one because their conditions have all been met. So one by one, these will all be popped off until we come right back down to an idle state. So let's code up our pushdown automata and create a couple states to get started. Let's start by defining an abstract base class for a state. All states are going to know about the pushdown automata that they belong to. So we'll pass that in through the constructor. And then they're all going to have three methods, enter, update, and exit. So that's enough for us to get started with the pushdown automata. We'll come back to make concrete states in a minute. So if I jump over to the pushdown automata class, the first thing we need here, of course, is a stack of these states. So I have a read-only stack here. I'll just declare it as new. Let's also have a public property here so that we can get the current state at any time. If the count is greater than zero, we'll just peek at the top of the stack. Otherwise, we'll return null. Now I want to make some select information available to all the states. So I'm going to make a new struct context. We'll fill this out in a minute. But for now, I just want to make it publicly available from the pushdown automata so that the states can read it. When we create the pushdown automata, we'll accept that context in the constructor and set it. Next, we need some mechanisms for pushing and popping states off the stack. So let's start with a push state method. It'll take in a state and push it right onto the stack, and then we will enter that new state. Likewise, we need to handle pops. So we'll have a pop state method. Let's check to make sure there actually is something on the stack. If there is, we need to exit the current state. And since that's always the top of the stack, we just call the pop method. Now, when our update method calls, we can run the update method of the current state, as long as it's not null, of course. Let's inline this as an expression body method. And just while I'm thinking about this, we might as well add one method so we can change the context. Uh, and actually, I'll just get Copilot to do this. There we go. And that's really it. For a simple pushdown automata, this is all that you need. Now, I am going to move this context struct over to the mono behavior where we're going to fill it out. So it's just a little bit easier for us. So I'll cut it here and I'll paste it over here in this file where we're going to create a new mono behavior called PDA controller. This is what we'll expose to Unity so we can fill out all the details we need to make the crafting station run. And of course, here is where we're going to define or inject an instance of our pushdown automata class. So I'm going to need some references from objects in the scene. Let's define those very quickly here. The first thing I'm going to pass in is what I want my final completed object to be. Now, normally in a crafting system, you might pass in a recipe repository or something. So you actually use the combinations to make something real. But here I'm just making one item for now. Next, I want a reference to the workstation, reference to the particle effect that plays when crafting is complete. I'm going to set how long it takes to craft the item. Now, again, craft time might end up coming from your recipe system. I'm going to define a counter icon. Your game might have more than one of these. We'll just start with one for now. Then the crafting station has room for status text and warning text. I'm going to show a progress bar. I need to maintain a list of all the crafting materials that the player has supplied to the machine. We're going to add a countdown timer to track the progress of the actual crafting. And I'm going to use an event bus to track drop events. When items are dropped onto this machine, we'll receive an event and handle it. So we'll have a binding here for that. OK, that's a lot of references. Let's wrap this up in a region and collapse. If you want to learn more about our improved timers or our event bus, links will be in the description. 
Now, without getting into drag and drop and inventory systems, when an object is dropped onto this machine, it publishes a drop event, and that contains a name and a reference to itself and some other information. We're going to listen for that drop event from the event bus. So here and on enable, we'll initialize our drop binding to connect that drop event to a method that will actually handle it. And then we'll register that binding with the bus. On disable, we're going to deregister. And then let's create a method for that where we'll debug something out to the console, but then we want to add the dropped object that came in through the message into our collected materials list. Okay, that's all the setup we have to do. I'm going to collapse everything so that we can create a start method and initialize our pushdown automata. So here in start, I do need to get a reference to that progress bar, which is in one of the children of this object. Then I'll initialize the countdown timer based on the craft time. Now this could be changed inside of a state because we're going to pass that timer around with the context. Let's also empty out the status text, the warning text, and let's disable the counter icon. Now we have all the information we need for the context. Let's quickly set that up. We're going to pass around the collected materials, final product, our countdown timer, the image for the counter icon, a reference to the workstation, and references to our status text and warning text, and also a reference to our particle image. Now I'm just going to adjust the screen a little bit because we don't need this anymore. Down here in start, I'll create one of those context structs and just fill in all that information. And we're going to pass that into the constructor of our pushdown automata. And you know what? Why don't we just inline this variable so we don't have an extra local one sitting there? There we go. And now to kick this off, all we have to do is push the initial state. Now we're going to have to set up a couple of states so that we can actually kick this off. We'll do that in just a minute. For now, let's collapse up start. I'm going to create an update method so that we can both update the progress bar and run the update method on our pushdown automata. Okay, that's it. Let's make two states, then we can test. So back here in our state class, we're going to get started with our idle state, which of course is going to be very simple. It needs a constructor that takes in a reference to the PDA. Then we have to implement the three methods, enter, update, and exit. In enter, we can change our status text on the crafting machine. We can also debug something out to the log. In update, we want to check to see if we're going to transition to a new state. So here, that means has the user started adding materials to the machine? If they have, we're going to push a new state onto the stack, which is the collect materials state. Finally, there's nothing to do on exit. In fact, we'll probably never exit the idle state, but we do need an exit method. So let's just debug something to the console in case that ever happens. Okay, let's collapse that one up and then we will make our collect materials state. So here we'll have the same type of constructor taking in the PDA, then we'll have an enter method. Here we can change the status text on the machine again to say add more materials and debug something to the console as well. Now an update where we're thinking about transitions, what we can say is if for some reason we have zero materials in the machine, we need to pop the state so that we go back down to idle. However, if we have all three slots filled with materials, then we want to go to another state. We want to push another state onto the stack, and we're going to make that one in a little bit. That'll be the one that actually does the crafting. Let's comment it out for now, and instead we'll just debug something to the console. This way we can go in and test now, and we'll come back and add more states in a little bit. At the moment, we don't have to do anything special in the exit method, so once again, let's just debug something out to the console. Now there's one thing we absolutely can't forget or this won't work at all. We have to go back to the mono behavior where we initialized our PDA and we have to push the initial state onto it. Time for a test. So I've already set up all my references and hit play. You can see we have a message in the log entering the idle state and the message on the crafting machine is changed as well. As soon as I drag an item in there, it changes into the collect materials state and the message on the crafting machine changes as well. If our crafting station goes back down to zero materials, it's going to go out of the collect materials state and back into idle. So let's put these vampire fangs back in there. We go back into the collect materials state and now let's put all three items. Okay, now you can see it's trying to transition into the refined material state. I'll actually just collapse that. You can see it's constantly going to try to do that, but we've got that commented out right now because we haven't made that state yet. So that's all we can do, but we can see that it's working. It's transitioning between the first two states, no problem. Let's keep going. Okay, let's uncomment this and we will define a new state. So I'll just collapse up this collected material state and we'll start working on that new one. Our earlier states didn't have a lot of work to do, but this one's going to do quite a bit more. Here we're going to have the same constructor as usual. I'm also going to cache a reference to the animator component that's on the workstation. 
So let's come down and create an enter method here. First of all, let's update the status text. And we can put something out in the console too. But then I want to get that reference to the workstation animator. And we're going to trigger a property on it. So why don't we cache that up here as a hash? Then right away, we can set that Boolean property to true. So that takes care of kicking off the animation. But why don't we also iterate over all of the collected materials and let's get a reference to their image and we'll just change them so they're semi-opaque. I'm also going to grab the component on them that makes them draggable and turn that off so that they can't be removed while the crafting is going on. Then we have a reference to our main timer that runs the progress bar and keeps track of how long it takes to make the item. Since all the items in this prototype take the same amount of time to craft, all we have to do is run the start method. Okay, that one's a little long, so I'm going to collapse it and we'll move on to update. Let's have an exit transition here so that if we ever have less than three collected materials, we're going to pop this state off the stack and go back down one. Otherwise, we can say that if our timer actually is finished, it runs all the way to completion, then we know we've crafted the item and we'll transition to the next state where we actually receive the item and any other rewards. Now, whenever we exit this state, let's debug something to the console, but let's also make sure that the main timer stops. Let's also turn off the workstation animation. So there were a lot of moving parts there. Let's hit play and then we'll load up this crafting station. So I'll give it one item. We'll just make sure that everything looks right in the debug log. And of course, once I get all the items in, we go into the new state and the progress bar starts moving and the animation starts playing. Now, of course, at this state, there's not enough logic for it to be able to push or pop other states because we're not doing quite enough for that. But we can run the progress bar all the way to completion. And you see, it just never goes anywhere. It'll stay stuck there forever. So visually that's looking great, but next we should add some functionality so that the player has to interact a little bit to make sure that their craft succeeds. For that, we can create an effect timer that will pick random times to add a new state onto the stack where the player will have to do something interactively to counteract some negative effect. Otherwise they might lose quality on their item or maybe their materials all get destroyed. So let's initialize it to count down a random time between one and three seconds. Our timers have an on stop hook that we can use. First, let's check to see how much progress we've made. I don't want to fire another one of these events if we're close to the end. So let's say 80%. On top of that, these timers run in the player loop system. So we need to make sure that we're in this state before we take any action. So let's say when we're below 80% progress, and we're still in this state when this timer stops, then we're going to push a counter effect state onto the stack. Then beyond that, we want it to queue itself up again at another random interval. So let's reset the time to another random range between one and five seconds, and we'll start it again. Now coming out of here, we need to start it for the very first time. I'm going to jump down to the bottom of the state so we can deal with the exit method. Here we just need a little bit of cleanup. Let's make sure that the effect timer stops. I'm also going to reset any warning text that's been added onto the crafting station. Okay, there was a lot going on in that state. Let's come out, collapse everything up, and then we'll start working on this counter effect state. This one's going to be shorter. First, let's set a time limit, how long the player has to react to the negative event. Let's also keep a Boolean to determine whether or not they have successfully countered the effect. We'll run a timer to see if they can do it within those three seconds. And similar to our drop events, I'm also using some hot bar events. We're going to hook into that here. We need a constructor just like all the others, but then we can add an enter method. Here we'll add some helpful warning text, and we can also turn on the counter icon. Then let's initialize the binding to the hotbar event to a new method handle hotbar event, and we'll register that binding on the bus. Let's also initialize the effect timer for this state and start it. So we'll do something really simple for handling hotbar events right now. In the future, you can add some logic here to make sure that the players actually use the right skill to counter the effect. For now, we're going to say any skill will counter the effect. So Let's update the warning text to say effect countered. Let's turn effect countered to true, and we're going to pop this state. It's going to page down and collapse up these two methods so we have some room. Now let's create our update method. If our timer runs all the way to the finish and we didn't manage to counter the effect, then let's put something out in the console. We didn't succeed. We can come back here and add some negative consequences in the future. For now, let's just pop the state off of the stack so that we go back down into the refinement state. Now, when the exit method actually runs, we're just going to do some cleanup. First of all, like usual, let's put something in the console so we have a good idea what's going on. Let's stop the effect timer. We don't need it anymore. Let's also disable that counter icon. And then let's deregister ourselves from the hotbar event. Okay, time to make sure that it works.
I'll just hit play and go right into loading up the machine here. Now the first effect will come between one and three seconds. If I counter it by clicking something on the hotbar, it'll pop that state off the stack again. Notice that the messages on the crafting machine are changing now. And also if we take a look in the debug log, you can see that that state was popped off the stack three times. Okay, now we don't have any success conditions yet. Let's add another new state so that we can complete the crafting process. First things first, in our refined materials state, we have a condition for success. Here we'll push a new state, craft item state. That'll be the completion of the crafting process. Then I'll collapse everything up and we'll create our new craft item state. We'll keep this one nice and simple. First we need our constructor, but then we can make our enter method. Here we can update the status text with some success message and also put something out into the console. Then we'll come down to update. Here we can debug something into the log. This state isn't waiting for any conditions or doing something every frame. So we can immediately pop this state and the exit method will run. Here, as we're finishing up the craft item state, we'll give the player their reward. Debug something out to the log. Let's iterate over all those collected materials. I'm gonna turn them all off. Now you could destroy them, return them to an object pool or give them back to the player maybe. Either way, they don't belong in the crafting machine anymore, I don't think. So I'm going to clear that list right out. Recall that having less than three collected materials is an exit condition for some of the states that are below this one in the stack. So before we actually get out of here, you should give the player whatever it was that they created. So for me, I just have a placeholder item here because this crafting station is just going to make the same thing over and over until I have a recipe system in place. So let's set that active. And then I'm also going to play my particle effects in the UI. And that's it. Any other details can be added down the road as more systems come into play. Okay. Only one thing to do now, and that's test crafting an item all the way to completion. So I'll hit play here. Let's load up the crafting station with all the items again and get it going. And then we can either counter the events or not. Let's see how many fire up and make sure they're working correctly. There's two, three. That's probably about it. We're at 80%. And there we go. Particle effects. And we've got a new item in the inventory, which I can do whatever I want with. If we take a look in the debug log, we can see that the crafting complete fired and then we cascade all the way down that stack because the exit conditions have all been met for all of these states. We've come all the way back to idle. So if I put the sword back in the crafting station, we go back into the collect material state, waiting for the other two items so that we can start crafting something new. And that's it really, that's Pushdown Automata, otherwise known as a stack-based finite state machine. And as I mentioned, I'll put some links in the description to some of the more advanced systems that we've built on this channel before, as well as any of the assets that you see here on the screen. Don't forget, we've got a Discord channel you can join where we talk about things like this and all kinds of other things every day. Hit the bell and the like button if you don't want to miss any future episodes every Sunday.